Nice day everyone, today we are going to explore Dublin Castle in Ireland. The castle, which is one of the most important buildings in Irish history. From 1204 until 1922, it was the seat of English and later British rule in Ireland. During that time, it served principally as a residence for the British monarch's Irish representative, the Viceroy of Ireland, and as a ceremonial and administrative centre. The castle was originally developed as a medieval fortress, under the order of King John of England. It had four corner towers linked by high curtain walls, and was built around a large central conclosure, constructed on elevated ground, once occupied by an early Viking settlement. The old castle stood approximately on the site of the present Copper Castle Yard. It remained largely intact until April 1654, when a major fire caused severe damage to much of the building. Despite the extent of the fire, parts of the medieval and Viking structures survive and can still be explored by visitors today. Following the fire, a campaign of rebuilding in the late 17 and 18 centuries saw the castle transform from a medieval bastion into a Georgian palace. The new building included a site of grand reception rooms, known as the state apartments. These palatial spaces accommodated the viceroy and were the focus of great state occasions. The viceroy and occasionally the visiting British monarch play host to a series of entertainment in the state apartments known as the season, included state balls, banquets and regal ceremonies for members of the aristocracy. In the early 19th century, the castle was enhanced by the addition of the Chapel Royal in the lower castle yard. This magnificent Gothic revival structure, bristling with pinnacles on the outside and rich with ornamental features, has provided a place of worship for the wise regal household it remains one of the architectural highlights of Georgian Dublin today. Dublin Castle was built by the dark pool Dublin, which gave Dublin its name. Dublin Castle served for the centuries as the headquarters of English and later British administration in Ireland. In 1922, following Ireland's independence, Dublin Castle was handed over to the new Irish government. It is now a major government complex and a key tourist attraction. Construction of Dublin Castle began in 1204 by King John of England, on a site that previously housed a Danish fortress, and the original Dublin Castle was built by the Vikings. The first incarnation of Dublin Castle, completed about 1230, was primarily intended as a stronghold to defend the city. Dublin Castle has been renovated and reconstructed several times. The castle was severely damaged by a fire in 1684, as a result, most of the architecture dates back to the Georgian period of Record Tower, which is the oldest surviving structure in Dublin Castle. The Record Tower it is the sole surviving tower of the original fortification. The original castle was built in the traditional Norman style. It had a courtyard design, a central square, tall defensive walls and a tower at each of the castle four corners. The castle history has close relationship with the independence of Ireland. During the Anglo-Irish War, the castle was the nerve centre of the British effort against Irish separatism. On the night of Bloody Sunday in 1920, three Irish Republican army members were tortured and killed there. When the Irish Free State came into being in 1922, Dublin Castle ceased to function as the administrative seat. It served for some years as temporary courts of justice. After the courts vacated the premises, the castle was used for the state ceremonies, and all inaugurations of subsequent president have taken place there. We start our tour with the Battle Axe Staircase. This sweeping staircase dates from 1749. It takes its name from the Viceroy bodyguards 
the battle axe guard, who once stood guard at the top of it. There are 28 stairs, and the large curtain pole above the windows is original and dates from the 1820s. It was recently conserved and reinstalled in the space along with the new curtains, based on records of the originals. The wool carpet was made in Ireland, a bespoke design in 2019. It is in keeping with the traditional red carpets recorded on the staircase in the 19th century and features a border of Irish shamrocks. We are moving into the St. Patrick Hall and it is the grandest room of the state apartments and contains one of the most important decorative interiors in Ireland. Today the room is used for presidential inaugurations. It is one of the oldest rooms in the castle, dating from the 1740s. Though it is decorated largely dated from 1790, including the most significant painting sailing in Ireland, executed by Vincenzo Valdre, composed of three panels. The sailing depicts the coronation of King George III, St. Patrick introducing Christianity to Ireland, and King Henry II receiving the submission of the Irish chieftains. Trust you like this video and find it interesting. When you do, give me a like and consider subscribing to this channel to let him grow. Cheers! This is a state corridor. This grand processional corridor was designed by architect Thomas Eyre in 1758. We are looking at the state drawing room. Remodel in the 1830s as the principal reception room of the Lord Lieutenant and his household. Today this room is reserved in use for the reception of foreign dignitaries. Largely was destroyed by a fire in 1941. The room was reconstructed with minor modifications in 1964 to 1968 and replicated furnishings and fittings. This throne room was once the centre of the British royal power in Ireland. In this historic room, four British monarchs and dozens of their viceroys held court. On the canopy we can see the room's oldest symbols, a lion representing England and a unicorn representing Scotland. Grippling the harp, they symbolise British control of the old Kingdom of Ireland. These carved creatures date from about 1788, when the throne room was created by the Viceroy of the day, Lord Buckingham. <laughs> 